All right, guys, we are back with the 2023 Honda Civic Type R, and this is going to be my first time driving this thing in the snow with the new wheels and tires. We're now running a set of Braid Full Race FFs, the flow formed wheels, in 18 by 9.5, 50 millimeter offset, a little bit more flush than the stock wheel and tire offset, which is 60 millimeters, so 10 millimeters outboard, and a very strong, very lightweight wheel, only about 21.4 pounds in this form which is very good and we're wrapping those in a set of continental dws 06 plus tires in 265 40 r18 a little bit of an oversized tire about an inch larger in diameter so i gain half an inch of ground clearance in the snow in this type r and uh, throws the speedometer off by about two miles per hour at 70 miles an hour so if i'm driving 70 i'm actually going 72 a little bit of a concession there uh, but I wanted the extra sidewall for all of our massive craters and potholes here in Michigan. And I figured this is just a little bit better insurance along with these super strong flow formed wheels. I'll be running this setup year round on the Type R and I'll just be using the 19s for track duty until those tires wear out. And then I'll probably get another set of 18s for the track because I really like the way this car drives on the smaller wheels and slightly larger tires. I did have some paint protection film installed on the front bumper right here. All of the black piano black plastic has been PPF2 to protect that. And uh, we'll see how that holds up. I think if I start getting some chips on the hood or the fenders, I might get those done as well. But uh, for now, that's mostly just to kind of protect it for track duty in the summer. I haven't gotten this ceramic coated or anything. I'll probably get it detailed and cleaned up a little bit more in the spring, but I uh, just got a good coat of wax on there right now. I did take this to Crown Rust Control to get rust proofed because I do want to drive this car year round and I don't want it to get all rusty and crusty underneath and uh, that's all taken care of. So I don't have to worry about driving this thing in the salt anymore. I can just kind of drive it worry free and not even have to think about rust even forming. All right, let's go take this for a drive and see how it does in the snow on these Continental DWS 06s. I wanted a tire that I could run year round, uh, the BRZ is going to be primarily my winter daily driver. If I have deep snow, I'd rather go take that thing out and enjoy it and slide around a little bit over this, uh, just because you can't really have a lot of fun in a front wheel drive car that doesn't have a handbrake. Um, you can do some reverse donuts, that's about it. <laughs> the rest of this is just a nice, safe daily driver. I did take this mountain biking yesterday, threw my bike in the back and it was fantastic. It had just so much room in it. All right, let's see how these tires do in the snow. This is literally my first drive. We've got a little bit of powder on the ground, the dusting from last night, not a lot of grip. <laughs> a little bit of push from the front end. You can definitely feel those wider tires. As you turn in, you lose traction, a lot of understeer. do have a ton of traction in the wet and the thing I like about them compared to the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires that come standard on the Type R is that they're very quiet comparatively on the highway. It's a little bit of impact noise but the NVH is a huge improvement compared to the Michelin's. I can cruise, have a conversation, talk on the phone on Bluetooth, I think if you live in a climate that regularly sees snow, I would probably go for a dedicated winter and I'd go for a slightly narrower tire, like a 245 or something like that. Still a little bit meatier of a sidewall on an 18 inch rim. But for us, for our, my purposes here in Michigan, also this being front wheel drive, I like to kind of get away with a little bit less aggressive of a wheel and tire setup, especially having the BRZ and the Highlander which both are very capable on the snow. Breakaway in the slippery stuff is very progressive. You can kind of feel it going pretty quickly. And we're not going to be able to test it out today, but traction and handling in the dry, oh man, these tires really put down a lot of grip and a lot of traction. I think they're going to be fantastic in the summertime. 
and they seem to evacuate slush pretty well too. We've got nothing too deep out there today, but I have a pretty good feel of what's under me on the road and how much grip I can get out of it. Yeah. traction control, see what happens there. A little bit of rotation, but even in plus R mode, you get some intervention from stability control if you get sideways, which is interesting. Something I never really noticed on the track when we drove these out at Sonoma, but that's very apparent here on the street in the snow in low grip driving. There's a good amount of rotation though from this chassis. That's fun. All right, let's turn traction back on. Go back into comfort mode. Even with traction control on, it gives you a little bit of wheel spin, some slip. stop on what looks like ice. Let's see how we get off the line here. This should be okay. Got a nice big gap. I will say having a limited slip differential up front in the snow really helps you put power down even if it just results in understeer. There's always a trade-off with winter tires, and that trade-off is traction outside of those intended driving scenarios. So outside of winter and snow driving, you're going to be getting less traction in the dry and the wet. Probably in 90% in of your driving scenarios, you're going to have a car that doesn't handle or stop as well. In return, you're going to get great snow traction. but you have to decide if those sacrifices are really worth it in the end. For me and my BRZ, I decided they were because that's a rear wheel drive car and there's no weight over the rear end. It's a front wheel drive car. There's lots of weight over those front tires putting traction down. So I figured I could go with a little bit less of an aggressive tire here and get away with some winter driving in this thing. Again, this suspension is adaptive according to your driving style and what you're doing with the car. So if you're even, even if you're in comfort mode, it can get really stiff if your revs are high and if you're throwing some corners and angle at that steering wheel, which is actually something I don't really like about it because if I'm in comfort, I want it to be comfortable and the car is going to adapt if you're driving fast. So yes, it's still a little bit more comfortable than it would be in sport or plus R mode, but it's kind of annoying in that it's changing. I would like to make those changes instead of the car. Gosh, it puts its power down so well. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this wheel and tire setup. This is uh, this is kind of goals with this car, and it's so far working out really well. A little bit of torque steer there. Missed that sensation. So just a little bit of a note on wheel fitment too. 
Uh, I didn't talk much about this at the beginning of the video, but the reason I went with a 50 millimeter offset on these braids is I didn't want to impact scrub radius and just kind of the original dimensions of everything too much. You can go as wide as a 45 millimeter offset on an 18 by nine and a half inch wheel on these type bars, and that's kind of perfect flush fitment with the fender. You can squeeze a, you should probably be able to squeeze this 265 40 under there, but the standard size would be a 265 35 R18. And that'll look pretty sharp. I decided to go five millimeters inboard from completely flush just to kind of minimize uh, any changes to the geometry that, that that would create. These wheels are painted in just the standard gray. They look a little bit different depending on the lighting that you put them in, which is kind of cool. These are in gloss, you can get them in satin, uh, a bunch of different finishes. And of course with braid wheels, you can get any wheel, any size, any offset, shipped to your door in about three to five weeks, which is pretty awesome. Completely custom set of wheels, specifically made for this type bar. It is actually kind of tough to find a good set of wheels that fit these type bars in 18 by nine and a half. There just aren't a lot of good looking options out there tire rack, etc. The options that are out there are super, super expensive. They're T37s or Volks, and uh, they're $4,000 for a set of wheels. These are about 600 bucks a piece. So uh, if you guys are interested in a set, check out Braid Wheels USA. Uh, Paul is a good friend of mine, and he uh, does a great job helping you out with fitment, ordering. Uh, the lead time for this was only a few weeks. It was like three, three weeks or so. So depending on the time of year, that'll kind of vary in, you know, in demand and stuff. But all right, that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see on this Type R. I will keep you updated as time and things that I do to the car progress. But until then, we've got some more really fun videos coming out for you from our recent trip in California. So anyway, stay tuned. You'll see those coming through the pipeline very soon.